Well, it's a shameful reality that many children in South Africa are abused or neglected. The Adopter School Foundation says there are significant challenges in safeguarding children and the abuse, neglect and violence that might be suffered is experienced at school at home and in the community obviously affects learning. To discuss what can be done about this concerning problem, we are joined by Melanie Spencer from the Adopter School Foundation. Melanie, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. I mean, children are facing all kinds of issues. I mean, just in this weekend alone, we've been talking about a 17-year-old who was raped and killed and who was, uh, you know, buried, uh, rather laid to rest yesterday. I mean, they, they have to be focusing a lot more on, on their schooling and, and just growing up. And yet now we're talking to them about making sure that they look over their shoulder, that they, mm -hmm. that they you know, protect themselves because we, as their grown-ups, as their elders, are struggling to do that. I mean, what does a child have to now do to ensure that they can actually live a full life? Uh, hi, good morning. Um, it's wonderful to be here with you. Y yes, it is very, very concerning what has happened with, with our children in the country. We see the stories uh, every day and it's, it's very disturbing. Um, you know, what does a child have to, your question is, what does a child have to do to be safe? Um, it, it, it's really not within their power. So I think um, to answer your question, it's, it's, it's the duty of the adults and the system and the schooling system and the homes and the communities they come from, um, the, the onus is on the adults to, to protect the children and to keep them safe. Yeah. The problem here is that unfortunately the adults are not doing a good enough job in some instances of keeping these kids safe. You know, Otherwise we would not have so many children that die of abuse, so many kids that are killed in school, so many children that are facing um, just, just life-threatening kind of dispositions in life. Have we as adults relegated our responsibility to parent or relegated our responsibilities and our duty really to have a child belong to a community because one there was a time where a child was just not my child it was the child of the village have we completely relegated that responsibility um yeah i i, I don't know the answer to that question it, it feels like we you know some of us may have abandoned i know that there are many of us that are that are working in the schools the teachers um, you know, some of the community organizations, the NGOs that are that, that are deeply concerned and that are that are getting involved and have been involved for many, many years. Um, yeah, I think that, you know, for a, for a young child, it's very disturbing because they really are at the mercy of the adults, whereas your high school learners can at least, um, you know, they, they, they've got more agency. They can they 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 are aware of where they can go. Um, they're, they're aware of what they can do, potentially do to try and to try and um, you know um, stop the abuse, and, and that they have avenues of, of of support they can go to. There is a mother who is currently held in custody, uh, Melanie, for poisoning her two children. Now, if you have a mother who bore these kids, you know, who who carried these kids for nine months, bore these kids, you know we would assume had built some kind of a bond with these children, raised them for however many years they were alive, and then decided that she's going to poison these children. I mean, yes, I understand you do have that, uh, um, you know, postnatal depression. Yes. It, it, is a, it, is, it, is, it is a reality that that does happen. But when it goes as far as you deciding that you're going to take it upon yourself to end your kids' lives, now you've got a parent that is going to do that. What, what does an uh, adopt a school foundation, for example, what can you actually do to a, for a mother like that? Um, look, yeah, uh, if I can just um, uh, yeah, mention briefly what, what we do as Adopter School. So I'm, I'm in fact with Cyril Ramaphosa Foundation. So we are, um, we are a, a foundation that works in education and in small business development. So on the education side, we've been active in, in, in the space for, for more than 20 years. Um, Adopter School itself turned 20 last year. So um, we have a program that we're currently working on and we have worked on for five years. It's a pilot and we've tested it and it's successful and we want to roll it out to many more communities where there's an urgent need. Um, the, the, the origin of the program of TARI came from, um, from our work in the schools over all those years. So we could see that there was abuse, we could see that the children were struggling and, and, and very importantly that they weren't able to, um, you know, complete their schooling sometimes they weren't able to to um their, their schooling was being affected their learning was being affected um so we could see this was happening and we could see also the the rise in the rise in abuse over the years so we then conceptualized a model this model called tari we actually got it um, a model from unicef and we adapted it and we took some other elements um, from other community models 
Um, so what Tari does is it's 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 located in um, it's 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 the the flagship pilot is in the Free State north of Bloemfontein, and it's located in eight schools. Um, so these are no fee schools. Um, so there's a a lot of cases of abuse. There's a lot of um, problems in the community, social ills. And in fact, that particular community, while we went there, um, we'd been operating, a doctor school had been operating there already. Um, and the, you know, the, the, the district officials asked us to come to that community because of extremely high levels of gangsterism. So children were literally, you know, coming to school with guns and, and weapons and shooting, you know, shooting in the school. And so it was really quite out of control. So we went to this community. It's got, so the, the program is comprised of four primary schools and four high schools. Um, so what we did was, is we took um, um, a, a auxiliary social workers, they call them child and youth care workers. And um, these, these guys are trained um, by government, so they, they're trained in the field. And so each school has one of these child and youth care workers, and then there's, there's, there's another one that, that manages the safe park, um, and they report into our social workers. And so over the years, we've been able to really see some really excellent results. Um, first of all, the community was very supportive of the program. Um, essentially, I think you could say there was a, a, a gap, a gap in the, in, the, in, the, in the area. So they don't have these child and youth care workers. So that's, yeah. that's the critical one. So there was a gap. Um, they embraced this child and youth care worker. You know, the schools are trying, but the issue really is that the schools are places of learning. So they're not, they're not, um, you know, they're not, uh, how do I say it? They're not, they're not you know, their, their skills are not to, to deal with social is issues. Their skills are to teach, right? Mm. So when, when you, and the teachers we know are overburdened, they have a high, high number of kids in the class. So this care worker is really very valuable because what happens is on, on the school level, um, they have something called a school-based support team. So these are teachers that are assigned to look after these issues. Mm. Number one, they often don't have training you know, they're trying to teach all of these things. So so what happens is uh, the, the school-based support team members will say, okay, we've got these 10 kids, they're, and they're at risk, we can see their marks have dropped, this one is looking very sad, there's something really wrong going on there, etc. And then our care workers will, will take that up. So they will then, um, they're at the school every day, um, they, will go to the, they will go to the homes, they will have discussions with the parents and they will, you know, um, diplomatically and in their way, ask what is going on. and and really and get to the bottom of it um yeah the so the pilot um sorry the program is comprised of three elements which are really very effective um the way they all work together so there's the they call it psychosocial support mm. which is really your social work support um then they we've got uh, a safe park so we, we've got one fully fledged uh, physical f a safe park um where where they you know the cluster the kids will c go to that one in the afternoon and that's for kids that are really at risk, that are orphans, that are vulnerable, that are, you know, in the afternoons, there's no one to care for them, mm. um, you know, that they, that they're issues, as I said, that have been identified. So at the, at the safe park, what we do is um, we do homework with the kids, we do reading with the kids, we play games, Scrabble, chess, um, um, uh, soccer, you know, and there's a physical space where they can play. And then we also then have uh, spaces where we address the issues. Um, so we have group you know, group sessions, individual sessions with the kids, and this is where the care work workers talk to them. And then another key element of the, of the, the program, which is very, very important, is um, about a network. We call it a multi-stakeholder um, uh, forum. Yeah. And here we meet with all, all, the, all the players in the community that work in this space, because in any community, there are always many, many of them. The point is that it's disjointed and nobody knows anybody. So okay. here, Melanie, what we, we do, have which is... We have to leave it here for this morning, but uh, listen, we do really appreciate your time this morning. More than anything else, a big congratulations and keep on mm. with the hard work that you're doing and practical interventions to be able to address this issue around uh, children being abused and taking advantage of and being neglected and the like. So really, really good work that, that's being done, but we have to leave it there for this morning. Melanie Spencer from Adopt a School Foundation just giving us a couple of interventions that have been put in place. Great initiative indeed, but on to the